Okada, Omega, Jericho, Bailey. I had to do that in the Tom Hannafin voice. Mike Bailey, Speedball Mike Bailey is the opponent that Impact Wrestling has announced for Will Ospreay at Bound for Glory. I did a upload last week speculating some potential opponents for for Osprey. And I'm not going to have the most popular opinion on this. I know some people do agree with me because I've spoken to people who agree with me. And I know that some people don't agree with me because I've spoken with some people who don't. And that's okay, whatever side of the coin you choose to be on. This match announced for Bound for Glory is really small thinking by impact. They did exactly what I feared, and it was that they were staying the course from the match that didn't happen at Multiverse United. And they stayed the course for the main event of Bound for Glory, Josh Alexander versus Alex Shelley. This is really small time thinking for me. Will the match be good? Will it be? Yeah, most likely. But this is an Impact Plus match. It is not to take away anything from what Mike Bailey can do in the ring in the type of matches that he puts on. And I'm sure there will be clips circulating about this. But Speedball Mike Bailey, outside of the Impact bubble, and those who keep a close ear to Canadian independent wrestling, he is a mystery. And you've got this guy who is coming off three extremely high-profile matches, and you are serving him up a former X-Division champion. This isn't going to be the main event. It's not going to be the semi-main. Is it going to open the show? Is it is it going to have that X Division spot that that they use to get the crowd hype to open the show? It's small time thinking, and let me explain to you. There's always a concept that I've that I've believed in, uh, and I kind of. I've kind of read read it in social media marketing, but it's a concept you can use all the way around when you're marketing something or you're promoting something. And it's a 70-30 mindset. And the 30% is to just do what you do and to know who your audience is and to appease that audience. The 70% is stepping outside of that box and seeing who else we can reach with at the same time in relation, you're still knowing who your target audience is, but you're stepping out of the box 70, 70% of the time. This match right here is to pop the impact fan base and that's it. And that's all it's going to do. Are there some people going to be like, okay, I'll tune in because we'll spray. Will Ospreay's on the show. Maybe. But are people who are going to tune in and buy this pay-per-view because it's Will Ospreay versus Mike Bailey? I don't think so. So 70-30, we're keeping this, this mindset here, right? So 30% of the Bound for Glory card should be for the Impact Wrestling fans. The other 70% are matches you put together How can we get people who aren't watching Impact right now to purchase this freaking pay-per-view? Now, it's all, it depends how you look at things. It doesn't mean if there's 10 matches on the card that three of them should be for the Impact fans and seven should be dream matches. That's not what I'm saying. Because there's only one wrestler on this entire card that can fall into that 70%. Just based off his star power and allure alone. And that is Will Ospreay. You can do the entire, say, Bound for Glory's eight cards. You could do seven matches at the Impact fan base. Can't wait to see. 
but Osprey has enough star power in his one match alone that that's where you're giving a, him an opponent. Now, people are going to want to really want to tune in and see. Josh Alexander, as much as he's still kind of a mystery outside of the impact bubble, not as much as Mike Bailey. As people, A lot more people know who Josh Alexander is. His name got name dropped on AEW once. The crowd appears to know who he was. He was PWY, what, seven, number seven or so? I know he was in the top ten. Seven, nine, I think it was an odd number. Why isn't he facing Josh Alexander in the semi-main of this thing? The guy who, you know, the wrestling purists have their, you know, they buy their magazines from, from Uncle Melter, and they know that Josh Alexander's on this list. And then all of a sudden they hear, well, he's facing Will Ospreay. Well, now there's intrigue. Now there's some real interest in maybe checking this thing out. And face it, Josh Alexander needs a high-profile match. The main event against Alex Shelley for the world title, staying the course, like that's not the high-profile match. That's honest to God. That's still an Impact Plus match. It's been one in the past. But it's okay. I, I'm, all, I'm all for a couple Impact guys main eventing Bound for Glory. They typically bring outsiders into main event Bound for Glory. You know, for the same concept that I'm explaining. But I'm all, I'm all for these guys facing each other and, and two Impact guys. But if you're going to go that route and you're going to say, hey, the main event's going to be a couple Impact folk, the knockouts world title match, a couple impacts people. I mean, and maybe maybe Mickey James versus Trinity is is that what they think is going to be that grab grabber that's just going to grab all these people from the uh, outside the impact bubble that want to see what Trinity's doing and, and always want to see what Mickey James is doing. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's what they think. Maybe that's what they feel is going to be the draw. But they're relying on the Will Ospreay name by itself to draw viewers and individuals who are going to want to purchase Bound for Glory. And I think it's a mistake. I think it's very small time thinking. And now some people have told me, well, the turning, you know, turning point is happening in the UK. So they got something planned for him there. Maybe he faces Josh Alexander there. Maybe it's for the world title. Maybe. But you're talking an Impact Plus show that 5,000 people are going to watch. I just don't. And it's not like Impact has this history of, I know I talk about this ad nauseum, but it's not like they have a history of getting on social media and saying, hey, this is how you get the ultimate insider and this is what it is. And they don't do that. They don't do that on the show. They don't do it on social media. They don't do it in the traditional media. They don't. There's no press releases going out. There's nothing. The Impact fans promote the ultimate insider more at I shouldn't say more but they promote it better than impact wrestling does itself so if you're going to say well Osprey's going to be doing this UK match well what's your plan to get people to actually purchase that are we gonna are we gonna ramp up efforts and to get people to sign up for the ultimate insiders are we really going to communicate with the rest to the wrestling world what the hell it is you know so if that's your plan cool but Turning Point is not Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory is a name that non, non-Impact non fans know. They know that's supposed to be your big show. And you've got him coming in to face a former X Division champion. The match graphic that has come out for this, Mike Bailey looks ridiculous. He's looked ridiculous for a while. He's got the speedball headband. And when he joined Impact... My guy, Lewis, had told me, yo, this is a huge signing for Impact. This is big. And I said, I'll take your word for it because the guy's name is Speedball Mike Bailey. Now, once I saw him wrestle, I said, wow, this guy can really do some things the other that other people don't do. He's got a great finisher. I think it's a dangerous finisher, but it's a great finisher that gets, you know, gets the people moving. He can't cut. He, he, this dude can't talk. He can't cut a promo. So how you, you, you can't just, we're just going to build the name off Will Ospreay. Showing up, you know, he's not going to show up to the impact tapings. Down for glory is not that far away. And even if he did, he would talk circles around Mike Bailey. But I don't see a plan in place to hype this matchup to the point that people are going to purchase this pay per view. This isn't Omega and Rich Swan, where maybe some people didn't feel Rich Swan was on his level, but, you know, 
there was a lot of work that Kenny Omega was doing up to the point that got pay-per-view buys up big time. I don't see where this does that. I don't, I don't see that happening here. I think it's just small potatoes. I think it's small thinking. It's we're going to put on a real good match for people, but you can't do that with, with Will Ospreay who just had these huge matches win over Chris Jericho. I mean, he's not going to lose this match. We know that he's not. So what are we just doing? A Will Ospreay showcase match. If Mike Bailey wasn't in this match, He'd be in some multi-person match for the X Division Championship or something, probably. There's no, he's not doing anything right now. So, of course, you guys can leave your thoughts and your comments about this. I think it was a, a really big time, major missed opportunity to get Josh Alexander, someone who's the closest thing to a wrestler they got trending right now because he was in a PWI top 500. It was a missed opportunity to make this match happen while that's all fresh in people's minds. But no, we're staying the course. We're doing our Impact Plus Multiverse United match. We're doing our match to get the world title back on Josh Alexander. Like, this is where you just call an audible. I, I, and I know that they have taped wrestling programs, and it, maybe it's not that easy. But how, how long have they known Will Ospreay is going to be a, a part of this thing? I think it would have been more hype if Josh Alexander didn't return when he did and was just sending in promo videos leading up to Bound for Glory and Will Ospreay was sending in promo videos leading up to Bound for Glory and we didn't see Josh Alexander in a year, but he returns at Bound for Glory. There would have been something in that. You know, but we got this guy that we we understand his gimmick as Impact fans, if you call it a gimmick. But, I mean, comes out dressed like a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger with a speedball headband. Like, to the outside wrestling fan, it's like, who the fuck is this guy? Now, maybe this this brings more eyes to Impact. Maybe Mike Bailey gets more fans in the process here. And if that's the case, awesome. But I do think this was a major missed opportunity.